In 1965, the Beatles tour of the United States set the country on its ear. The album Help was an instant hit. In 1968, when they decided to set up Apple Records, America was the market in those days. You had to have America. And uh, I was the only executive they knew. They sent for me. We set up Apple Records, and then I came back and ran it for them in America. Ken Mansfield was in the right place at the right time. At least that's how he sees it. Propelled into the center of Beatlemania, Ken was the man in the U.S. for the Beatles' Apple record label. The thing that happened to me is I didn't get it. I didn't, I wasn't a fan of the bands. I didn't realize that they were that great to me. I'd been working with so many bands and like big splash and then they go away and I just thought the Beatles would, would have their time. And I wasn't in awe of them. And I think they sensed that. It also opened the door of a lot of other things in your life. What happened to you? It's just like, you know, the way the devil works. It's just little by little, you give up another little piece. Well, it's okay if I do this. And pretty soon I was immersed in it, just like anybody else, and it became a part of my life. Now, in the 60s, it became very hip to do, to do drugs uh, because marijuana wasn't addictive, cocaine didn't really hurt you, and if you did uh, the acid, you got closer to God. How did it affect your work? I think you start making bad decisions. Uh, I think you realize that, uh, or you think that everything's going to last forever. Doesn't matter if maybe if you're a little late for this, or you slough this off, or, or maybe you don't give this person the consideration that they deserve, and because you're with a star, you know, you're a big deal. Ken moved upward and onward after sensing a Beatles breakup. He became president of MGM Records, and still wanting more, Ken left the corporate world and started Hometown Productions Incorporated signing on some of the biggest names in show business. Ultimately, where did this lead you, this, this lifestyle? Well, ultimately, it led to an incredible downfall. And it's an amazing thing, Scott. Nobody had a better resume than I did in the record business because I had not only the Beatles, but with all the other famous people, and I was vice president and president of major companies, all these hit records, all this success, uh, never been fired, never failed, but all of a sudden, things just started falling apart. Of course, George Harrison had turned me on to, um, to the metaphysical thing, so I had my guru, and I was doing all that, and, uh, you know. <laughs> and But one day, I just uh, found myself just totally bottomed out, broke, lost everything. Losing everything meant Ken Summer State on a quarter mile of California oceanfront, a mansion in Hollywood Hills, servants, money, power, you name it, Ken lost it. And I end up in Nashville, Tennessee with three cardboard boxes and three suitcases, broke, out of work. Um, Whoa. So this young lady walks into my life and big, big green eyes and southern accent and, and, uh, and um, she just uh, set me straight. How did she do that? She said, Jesus is the way. And I said, I agree with you, honey. He is a way. There's many paths up to the top of the mountain. And she said, no, he's the way. We had more fights over that. And I said, look, uh, you know, I'll change gurus for you if you'll just get off this Jesus thing a little bit. <laughs> Let's just meet in the middle. She wouldn't do it. This green-eyed Southern girl named Connie made it clear to Ken that she chose Jesus over him. I thought, if she loves Jesus that much, maybe she's got a better idea than I do. And uh, she brought me to the Lord. Married for 20 years, Ken and Connie have an interesting life together ministering all over the country using Beatlemania as a platform. Ken is going strong today, and he's still often in the right place at the right time, especially this one time when a woman let him know she'd been praying for him since the 1960s. She said, I don't have a question, but I have a comment. Uh, when I was 15 years old and was in a youth group, we were on a youth retreat, and my youth pastor said, we are going to pray for a group of people that are leading a very decadent lifestyle, and they need our prayers of salvation. And she said, this youth pastor gave us a list of names. It was the Beatles and the guys in their group. She said, me and five of my girlfriends picked the name Ken Mansfield. We didn't know who you were. It was just a name. I prayed for you all through junior high school, all through high school, all through college until I went off and went into the world for a while. And she said, I saw your name 
that you are appearing at this church, and I've come here to see the answer to prayer. So you're using the Beatles, God's using the Beatles. <laughs> He's using and, us all.